Hey everyone, welcome to our unit on the ancient Mediterranean and the main assignment in this unit will be to create a complex vase and we will be using Greek vase references, we'll be making drawings and templates. Three, two, one. What does that mean? It means we will be using three Greek vases that will serve as your, our references. That's what you're looking for. Two drawings that synthesize what you like best about the vases that you choose. One scale template of your favorite drawing. So here are the vases you'll be referencing. And this is your research. Minoan vases, 3000 to 1400 BC. And these were all seen at the Archaeological Museum of Heraklion. And you walk right in and you go, oh my gosh, there's all that stuff I've seen in all my, you know, all my history classes. All right, it's incredibly amazing. And you see other things. These aren't necessarily the kinds of bases we're going to be making, but they're Herculean. They're these incredible things with these huge um, handles on them, sometimes all around. And this gives you a sense of their scale. They're human scale. They're five feet tall, some of them. And the reason why they have all those handles on them is to hold them in place on boats. They were used not only to hold things, but they were shipping containers, as were these. All right. Then we let's go down to the smaller stuff. And we're thinking about just looking at the basic forms of, Mini, of Minoan pottery. And it's all, the word I can use, this is one of my favorite pots in the world. Um, they're all voluptuous. They, they're, they're bulbous. They're gorgeous. They have all these designs on them that have to do with nature, with the, with ocean life, um, with things that are living and moving and breathing. Um, it's really, they're just gorgeous forms. And some of them look like balloons that are about ready to pop, right? And they have all kinds of things that you'd see out in a meadow or a field or something that's growing that you're going to eat later. So anyways, Minoan pots were all life-affirming, let's put it that way, and gorgeous precedent for what we'll see later in classical Greek pottery. Um, and some of it, you know, there's a lot, a lot of variations. Um, and then sometimes it gets, you know, pretty sophisticated with all kinds of stuff going on. It. And sometimes it gets downright wacky. And like, really? What were you thinking there? But anyways, um, that is some examples of Minoan pots. And you can look just to get a general reference um, for what we're looking for. But Mycenaean pots, not so much. My, the Mycenaean culture was what took over for a relatively brief amount of time after the Minoan culture. And they absorbed Minoan culture, um, dominated it, absorbed it, and then uh, um, their pots kind of reverted back. They went to geometric pots and their shapes were derivations. And what was put on them all had to do with, you know, things that were used for warfare usually, you know, how many soldiers you had, um, how many arm how many armies and who you who you went to go combat and that kind of stuff. So I don't got a lot to say about it as far as maybe for historians it's interesting to see, but um, as far as beautiful form, maybe not so much. But the classical Greek faces, approximately six hundred to three hundred BC, whoa drop you know knock your socks off okay we're looking at nothing but form here we're going to talk about content later in the, the actual things that are going on but the basic form and here you've got a body you got a foot you got a neck you got a lip and then you usually have some kind of handles but my god look at that and i'll talk to oh, well, i'll have a long conversation with you about what that's about and we'll talk about how we're going to incorporate um, storytelling but these are the things about the classical Greek pots that were kind of consistent and that they started to borrow and embellish dramatically from the Minoans was the body, the neck, the lip, and the foot in a very graceful and meaningful manner. That might really, you think? And in, in variations on, on handles, again, variations on foot, body, neck, lip, handles. As you can see, you know, handles coming out here, completely different shape, different feel, different story too of course you know and so here you go body neck rim foot and you know here you've got a, a scene an everyday scene from Greek life and you think well that is not very applicable to us in the Bay Area but not necessarily in the world I was in China not too long ago and I was on a hike and I looked over and there was a guy plowing his field with a yak <laughs> I was like really yep it happened 
and it does happen pretty routinely around the world anyways um okay now they're just showing off so you've got all kinds of now they're getting really you know elaborate and everything neck body rim i mean now and like oh, okay over the top now here are the focal point besides the incredibly maybe overcomplicated composition of imagery but also the the handles here become a dominant part because i mean look at them they're so heavy and here again one thing that they brought from the i think from the minoans is this, the voluptuous shapes that look like you know billowing you know forms that are almost like balloons about ready to pop and here you have the added extra of a of a hand of, of a lid too right but look at the gracefulness of these handles that that's what i want you to look oh, okay everything and the kitchen sink you got a body a foot and a, a pot on a pot and all kinds of faces and everything going on so anyways this is kind of crazy as is this okay these are pots about pots well it's i mean sculptures about pots because this is this is um marble and it's about pots and they're using them as a canvas to then tell the stories that would be told on a pot but they're just commemorating pots and the stories that are potential so it gives you an idea of how important pots were and what they told the story okay the stories they told now it's just getting ridiculous so all right they could be hyperbolic too you know i think this is actually some kind of a lantern thing but really it's the classic greeks had it okay so rough drawings you're going to find three images of things that you like. I don't care where you find them, Minoan, um, Mycenaean, or Classical Greek, but complex faces. And then you're going to start by doing rough shapes. You're going to just play around on your page, and then you're going to come up with, okay, rough shapes. I'm going to make them, delineate them a little bit more. And then, okay, maybe I'll put some certain kind of feet, different feet on here. Maybe I'll try different rim or different, you know, necks and rims. Okay, fine. And then maybe I'll add different handles to these things and see what they look like. Okay, good. And they will look really rough like this. Don't worry about it, man. I want to see that you're searching. I want to see that you're, woo, let's put this back. Come on, Mark, put it back where it goes. There you go. Um, I want to see that you're searching around as you're drawing. It's, it's kind of cool to see, you know, somebody's process. Oh, I tried this and I like that. No, I like this better. I don't know. What is it? Um, so... What you're doing in your drawings is searching. But then, and you might as well take a few pictures of those as you're going, but then you'll eventually end up with something a little more delineated like this. After you've done a few that are rough, then you'll kind of go, oh, if I just billow that out or put the handles here, it's the way I want it. I want you to come up with something that you like because from those drawings, once you come up with a couple of things you like, you're going to go from drawings to templates. So you take a piece of paper, you fold it over, you measure eight inches, and you draw half of the pot, half of the body of the pot that you want. I want you to notice one thing. See how this here is flat? You want to leave that a little flat so you can put a foot on it. Don't do this. If you go all the way down to a point, then you have a pointy thing and it's hard to put a foot on it. Just, just saying. So anyways, you cut it out and you got this cut out and there's your shape, right? Cool. And then, okay, you can do variations. Taller and narrower, wider. And then you say, oh, fun with templates. And you say, here's some more shapes. Well, more fun with templates. All right. Anyways, how do you take templates and make them back into drawings? They can be helpful because you can take a template, right, and draw it on something. You get a basic shape. You can do it several times on several pieces of paper and then try stuff. For example, you take this shape and you go, I'm vibing on this part. I want to do that, but I want it this narrower and I want this a little different. So you come up with that. Or you say, oh, I'm vibing on this pot, except for this doesn't have a foot. I'm going to put a foot on here. And this is way too wide. I want this. And I like this. I like, I don't want to come straight down. I want it more, more rounded, whatever you, whatever you're going, you know, to decide. And you come up with something like that. You get the idea, right? So here's another shape, a little bit more, even more bulbous, right? More billowy. And so you do some drawings. Do I want this or do you want this? I don't know. But you try it. And maybe you're vibing on this shape here and you're trying out stuff and you come up with this. And this is what we're coming up with is a template for you. You are coming up with a template for yourself. This beautiful pot, which is, I think, maybe one of the most gorgeous pots in the world, too. And so 
Maybe you decide to just change it a little bit. Maybe these are too narrow, so you make them a little wider. Maybe you don't like this kind of a, of a spout in a, in a neck, so you make it a little different. But it's, it's vibing on it, so it doesn't have to be exact, right? So the point of this is that you are going to make uh, two drawings that you feel were pretty confident that you could go with one or the other. And what you're going to do this week is you're going to make this shape, this body shape. We're not going to be, maybe later we'll worry about this and this and then any designs in the inside, but now we're just worried about this basic shape. This portion is what we're concerned with this week. Coil this part this week. All right, this part. So once you've decided it and you think it's cool, then you want to have a template because from that template, as you look and see all the, all the videos that Carl and I made about how to do it, you're going to make this form out of clay. And the main thing is that this from here to here is at least six inches, but more like eight inches. So you have something substantial. Because then when we have a foot and a spout, this thing's going to be maybe, you know, 10 to 15 inches tall. It's going to be a pretty substantial pot. And there's a lot of stuff we're going to do once we get it made for telling stories, for putting things on. Not that are replicas of greeks um we're not you know living in ancient greece we're not living in in crete in you know in the bronze age um we're living in, and so we are going to vibe once we get forms decided that are cool and once we get everything figured out then we're going to start thinking about what we want to say or what stories we want to tell in here anyways but for now the only thing you need to think about is getting to that point Three, two, one, right? You're going to have three bases that you think are cool, that you really like, two drawings that are variations on those, and then one template, and this is a template. Once you have your template, then you're going to make that template out of clay by coiling. Okay, that's enough. No more. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.